This amplifier review and feature overview video is sponsored by Audio Control, making good sound great. An essential foundation for a great car audio system is a great amplifier. Now, if you're a car audio enthusiast, you know that there's tons of different options out there for amplifiers for you to choose from. An issue that we're facing more and more nowadays is a complicated radio that's part of a factory vehicle that cannot simply be replaced. This leads to us needing factory integration units like line output converters in order to interface with the factory radio signal and then send it to an amplifier. Now what if there was an amplifier that had all the capabilities and functionality of an advanced line output converter? What if this amplifier also had multiple configurable channels that we could control the crossover settings? What if it would restore bass to the factory signal and what if we could even sum the signals so that we could make a full range signal to send to our speakers. Well, lucky for us, Audio Control has recently released their new LC-4.800 and LC-6.1200 amplifiers. So guys, let's dive in and take a look at these amplifiers because they are absolutely insane with the amount of flexibility and control we can have over our audio. So to get started here, let's go ahead and look at the dimensions of this amplifier. It's approximately seven and three quarters inches deep by just under 12 inches wide and approximately two and an eighth, maybe two and a quarter inches tall. Now I've actually had the LC-6-1200 installed into my vehicle for the last several weeks and I've really enjoyed listening to this amplifier, but I wanna show you guys installation here on the test bench. The test bench allows me to better explain how to install this amplifier and a lot of the features, but basically you can see that it simulates an actual car electrical system. You can see we have a car battery there. We're hooked up to an OEM stock radio here and a stock amplifier. So this is basically the stock OEM system out of a vehicle. And we're gonna show how we can use the amplifier to completely integrate and amplify the signal. So one of the first things here that we're gonna to need to do is we're gonna to wanna to remove the protective cover off the top of the amplifier. And this has two Allen head bolts that we simply undo and then we can lift this lid off and away. Now you can see this gives us access to a variety of different settings, but it also gives us access to all the set screw connections so that we can actually make these connections. To start with our connections here, I've connected a 12 volt constant power wire as well as a ground wire. Now, if you're familiar with installing amplifiers, you know that oftentimes we also have to connect a remote in wire. In this case, I'm not gonna connect that and I'll show you why in a little bit. To move on, next we have our line level inputs and this is what you would connect your RCA wires to if you were using an aftermarket radio or an OEM radio that had line level outputs. Now something else really interesting is not only do we have line level inputs, we also have a pair of line outputs. What's awesome about this output is we can then connect it to another amplifier and provide that amplifier with a signal. So that way you don't have to use a bunch of Y splitters or anything like that to connect the multiple amplifiers. You simply connect this first one and then the signal goes out to the next one. Where these amplifiers really shine though is their ability to integrate with a factory system. So in this example, I'm actually gonna be attaching to this factory amplifier. And just so you guys know, if your vehicle didn't have a premium sound system with a factory amplifier, you can also connect using the factory radio outputs. So all of these different wires here, these are what actually are connected to the speakers if this was actually inside of a vehicle. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take these speaker leads and we're gonna connect these to the speaker level inputs on the amplifier. Now audio control makes this really easy to do because we can actually disconnect these little connections and attach them to our speaker wires and then plug them in once we're done. So now I have all of the speaker wires connected to the speaker level inputs of the amplifier. If you remember earlier, I mentioned that I wasn't going to attach a remote in, and this is why. You can see right now that the factory radio is off and the amplifier is also off. But watch this, if we turn on the factory radio, 
the amplifier automatically turns on. The amplifier turns on because of Audio Control's GTO Signal Sense technology, and GTO stands for Great Turn On. What the GTO technology does is it actually monitors some of the input channels from the speakers, so the amplifier will know to turn on when it detects a signal from those speaker wires. This is nice because it's one less connection that we need to make, but if we did want to actually use the remote in, we could do so by simply turning the GTO off. Now there's one more thing that's really cool about this. If we measure the voltage with our ground and then touch the remote lead connection, you can see now we have a 12 volt out. What that means is we could now use that to turn on some sort of relay, to turn on LED lights or other devices within our system. So some great added functionality with that. Before we get into all the settings, I want to explain the OEM integration side of this amplifier. What's important to understand is with this factory amplifier, it has multiple different output channels. For the factory amplifier, channels one and two went to tweeters. What that means is channels one and two were bandwidth limited. So channels one and two out of the OEM amplifier are the purple wires here, and I wanna show you what I mean by the fact that they're bandwidth limited. On the stock radio here, I'm playing pink noise, and pink noise is basically sound at every single frequency that we can hear. Now this is an RTA, and what this will do is it will allow us to see what frequencies are actually playing from those particular speaker wires from the factory amplifier. So if I connect to the purple wires here, you can see that it's only playing the upper frequencies, and that's because this was connected originally to a tweeter. Now if we connect to the white wires, I can't really get to them right there, so I'm just gonna connect over here where I can easily get to it. You can see that on the white wires, we have a full range signal, except for the highs drop off. So what's awesome about these amplifiers is we can actually take that high range signal and we can add it and sum it to the rest of the range signal for our output to our new speakers. So to give you one more real quick visual of what I mean by this, this is just the signal from the tweeters from the factory amplifier. This is just the signal from the mid-range speakers on the factory amplifier. And what we're going to actually get out of the audio control amplifier is this signal. You can see that now we have a complete full range signal. We have this part, we also have the highs, so we're good to go with our new aftermarket speakers. The next connection we have here is for the ACR1 level control. We'll simply plug that in. The ACR1 is an auxiliary dial that we can connect to this and we can run to the front of the vehicle so that we can actually control the level of different channels. And what's cool about that is we can actually determine what channels we want the ACR1 to actually control. So we could use it for a master volume control by activating it on all channels, or we could just use it for a subwoofer level control if we activate it on channels five and six, for example. Now, finally, the last connection that we'll need to make here is these connections here and these are our speaker outputs to the speakers that we're actually going to be running on our system. On this particular version of the amplifier we have six channels to work with. Each channel is 125 watts at 4 ohms or 200 watts at 2 ohms. We can also bridge the channel pairs for 400 watts of power at 4 ohms. What's amazing about the design of this amplifier is we can actually use these channels in a variety of different ways. And that's because of all the different settings that we have on top here. So while I explain the functionality of the amplifier, I wanna have a target system in mind. In other words, an example system that we might wanna set up. So for this example, let's say that we're gonna have channels one and two go to a component tweeter. We're gonna have channels three and four go to a component mid-range slash woofer. And then we're going to have channels five and six go to a subwoofer. Let's dive into the settings. And at the end, once you have a better understanding of those, I can explain all the different system configurations that we could actually do with this amplifier. We can start with the power and protection indicators. So obviously when we turn the radio on and the amplifier comes on, we're going to get an indicator light here that the power is on. Now what's unique about this amplifier is if we do have some sort of issue and the protection light comes on, you can look in the manual and the light will actually 
actually blink in different codes to tell you what's actually wrong with the amplifier. Next up, we have the switch to activate GTO signal sense. And this is what I was explaining earlier. With it on, if it detects a signal on the inputs, it will actually turn on the amplifier. With it off, you do have to connect a remote wire in order to turn the amplifier on. Our next settings are grouped here for channels one and two. The first of those settings is the front high level. Now, if you remember earlier when we connected our wires here, these particular wires are from the tweeter, which are the front high signal, and the white wires are also the front, but they're for the mid range from the amplifier. I've currently got the RTA connected to channels one and two on the speaker outputs. So basically this is seeing what the speaker would see frequency wise. And what I can actually do with this front high level adjustment is if you watch in this range right here, you can see that it's adjusting whatever the input is over here on the front high level. So in my case, that input is a tweeter. So it's these frequencies here. Right now I have it all the way down, but I can actually turn it up and level match it with the rest of the signal. This is really handy because if your factory system has tweeters that are overly loud, you can actually turn them down. Or if it's not loud enough, you can bring them up to actually match the rest of the level. Something else you could really use this for that is handy is if you're familiar with vehicles that have a door chime built in, you oftentimes don't want to amplify that door chime because it will be extremely loud when you listen to it on the new amplified system. What you can do is whatever speaker wires have that factory door chime, you can connect them to the front high signal and even though the rest of the signal is amplified, you could turn down that door chime so it isn't as blaringly loud and obnoxious. Our next switch here is to activate the AccuBase and ACR1. Now you'll notice that this switch is actually on each channel pair. The AccuBase controls are right here. And if you're not familiar with AccuBase, what this actually does is a lot of times a factory system will have very limited bass response. The car manufacturers will remove the bass on purpose because they don't want you to blow their cheap and expensive speakers. But when we install new aftermarket speakers, our speakers can handle that bass. So we want to bring it back in. If you remember earlier, I mentioned that I'm going to be using a component tweeter for channels one and two. So in this case, I'm going to disable the AccuBase because that's more of a technology that we're going to want to use once we get to the subwoofer channels. And again, this is just an example for how you could use this system. So the next two adjustments that we have here work together, and these are for our crossover. The switch here allows us to select a crossover range from 30 to 300 hertz, or if we switch it over, we can use 500 to five kilohertz for our crossover. Now in this case, in my example, I'm gonna be doing a tweeter, so I want this over to the 500 to five kilohertz. Now, with our crossover setting, if you watch over here, right now it's set at 500 hertz, so it's letting everything above 500 hertz go past, but in this case of this tweeter, let's say that I wanna set it to about 1.7 K. And what's nice is this has a nice tactile feel. It isn't a normal dial that kind of evenly goes. It has little click indications. So there we go. That's perfect. This should work really nicely for our component tweeter. The next switch here is for mono or stereo. So basically we can pick if we're using two outputs on that channel, which in this case we are, so we want it at stereo, or if we were actually bridging the connection and doing a mono output for something like a subwoofer, we would slide it over to mono. Finally, we have the gain adjustment. We'll touch more on this later because this amplifier has some really cool controls for how to set the gain. Now you can see that between each of the channel pairs, we have a sum selection switch. What the sum selection switch will allow us to do is let's say that we actually want to combine the frequencies from these two along with channels three and four that we're actually going to use for outputs three and four. If we wanted to do that, we could simply switch this switch on. Now, as a reminder from channels three and four, I'm going to be powering my mid range or my woofer. So in this case, I need frequencies that are in this general range right here, and I have them. So there's really no need for me to sum in this particular instance. 
but you have that functionality if you need it. Now, as we move into channels three and four, we have many of the same options as channels one and two. What's unique about channels three and four is we actually have the ability to control a band pass crossover. If for some reason we did only wanna use channels three and four as a high pass, we could do so by moving this selection switch, but we're actually gonna use it as a band pass. Since I'm using my tweeter here for all the high frequencies on channels one and two, in this example, I don't need the high frequencies on channels three and four, which is what we're connected to for this speaker. So if I flip the switch here from high pass to band pass, now I'm actually activated this particular crossover and you can see that those frequencies went away. Let's say that I wanna cut everything above, I don't know, 2000 Hertz. What we can do is make that adjustment now you can see at 2000 Hertz, we have our cut. Next up, channels five and six, which we'll be connecting to a subwoofer, but uh-oh, we have a problem. You can see that we're actually not getting any signal here out of these channels. Now that's because I actually didn't connect the subwoofer channels. Let's say that you only had a certain number of channels to work with, but you still wanted to have outputs on channels five and six from the new amplifier. Well, not to worry because what we can do is we can actually sum to channels three and four by flipping that switch. Now we have the same signal that's coming in on channels three and four. But the next problem is we have a full range signal. We only want to send subwoofer frequencies to our subwoofer. Well, not to worry, we can actually control that as well using the crossover. Right now, the crossover is set to a high pass setting. That's why we're getting this big range of frequencies. If I switch it to a low pass, now you can see that we're only allowing whatever is lower than our setting. Now, right now, we're sending frequencies as high as 200, 300 hertz to the subwoofer. We don't wanna do that. We wanna tune it down, let's say to 100 hertz, like so. So now we have a nice output that's gonna work perfect for our subwoofer. So there is still one more issue with this signal. You can see that we don't have quite as much bass that would be great to send to a subwoofer. And that's because, again, the car manufacturers, they like to limit the bass, but not to worry, we can use Audio Control's AccuBase technology the level is all the way down right now. If we start to bring it up, you can see that we're bringing in a lot more of this lower region and restoring that base. Now let's talk about Audio Control's MILC source clipping technology and the rest of these indicator lights. The factory audio system is going to have a point that once you turn it up to that level, it's going to actually start sending a distorted signal to your new system. The problem with a distorted signal is it doesn't sound good and it can actually damage your speakers. What's cool about these indicator lights is as I slowly turn up the factory radio, right there, there it is. I go on it, now I turn it down, go up again, down again. So you can see that these indicator lights will tell us when clipping is occurring so we know not to turn up our factory radio past that point. So these other three indicator lights allow us to actually adjust our gain for each of the channel pairs. So for this example, I'm gonna adjust the gain for channels five and six, which is the indicator light in the lower left-hand corner here. What I'll do, is slowly adjust this until we see the light actually come on. There it is right there. I'll back it off just a little bit, just barely. So now our gain is set correctly for our system. So with all the flexibility and functionality of these amplifiers, I was able to set up this example system. Now this is just my example, and keep in mind you're doing this with only one amplifier. Now there's tons of different options, but Audio Control actually lists another three examples here in their manual. You can see in this first example, they actually have a left and right front coaxial speakers. You could have a rear left and right coaxial speakers, and then a subwoofer or a pair of subwoofers, multiple subwoofers, wired in parallel or series connected to the last channel. So you could create a huge system out of this one amplifier. Now example number two here is where you have the six channel model of this amplifier along with another amplifier. And what they're showing here is that you could have a two-way component set up front where you have separate tweeters and woofers. And then in the back, you could have a coaxial set. And then 
since you can connect a second amplifier using the line outputs here, you could then use that second amplifier for a subwoofer. Now for you sound quality guys out there that delete your rear speakers, something else really cool you could do with this amplifier is you could do a three-way component set up front where you have tweeters, mid-range and woofers all up front on six independent channels. Now, not only does this amplifier have a ton of functionality, I've been actually using it for the last few weeks and I've found a number of different things that I'm really happy about. First off, the amplifier really doesn't seem to have any noise. The signal is super clean. I don't hear any static at all. With music, the amplifier has a very clean, natural sound as you would come to expect from a higher quality amplifier. Keep in mind, this amplifier is a great way to get excellent sound quality out of both an OEM stock radio system as well as an aftermarket radio system. And of course you have all the functionality and the fact that it's an integration unit built into the amplifier. So really you have a full system within just the amp. If you're interested in this amplifier and would like to learn more, be sure to head on over to audiocontrol.com. I'll have a link down in the video description. And if you'd like to purchase it, be sure to get it from an authorized dealer. Thank you to Audio Control for sponsoring this video and thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. Don't forget to design, build, and install.